Hello everyone welcome to an exceptionally long new video. Today we will be looking at this complicated end game study, where both sides do a little beautiful maneuver of their pieces, and black wins with the help of a brilliant under promotion. In this position, both kings are in a stalemating position, and black's a pawn is unstoppable. This suggests that white may have some stalemate defenses, and after the first move from black, a4, black can start maneuvering the bishop to c7, d8, h4, and e1 just the time before promotion. If black makes a queen or rook, the game is stalemated. If black makes a bishop, white can trap black's bishop with bishop f3, and the next move will be a stalemate. Therefore, the only move for black is the brilliant move a1 knight under promotion. Now let's build a winning plan for black. We know that white's king is stalemated so if the knight can give a check, it would be checkmate, and the only square to give a check for the knight here is e2. Thus black must make a maneuver to e2 as quick as possible, and if white plays a random bishop move like bishop b4, knight b3 will double threaten to get to e2 in two moves, and the only way for white to stop both of these is by planting the bishop on b2 in exactly two moves. Therefore black plays bishop c3. Knight b3 like before is just met by bishop b2, and the game will be a draw. Instead let's switch plans and play knight c2, taking a long maneuver. If white just play a random bishop move, black will continue with their plan with knight b4, d5, f4, and e2, and the white's king has no way to escape. Instead, white must attack the e3 pawn in one move with bishop d5. That move seemingly hangs a bishop, but taking it will be a stalemate, so black must just continue with the plan. After knight d5, black forks white's bishop, the pawn on b6 and also the square c3, and two for white to defend all of them is bishop d4 and bishop c5. If bishop c5 we have the beautiful geometrical move knight c3 attacking e2, forcing white's king to come out to f2 where knight e4 forks the king and the bishop. White must play bishop d4 instead, and after black's knight maneuvers to the other side, still threatening e6, white must tux his king out with king f2 and after black the king back to g1. Knight takes e2 check is finally possible, and we reached the second phrase of the study. After white's bishop is taken and the king arrived on g3, we must build a new winning plan for black. Here white is threatening promotion in seven moves. Black's knight, in order to win, must remove white's pawn that was stopping black's king from moving, and remove the d6 pawn as well to stop white's h pawn just before promotion which takes exactly 7 moves. To remove d6 black must also remove e5, in which the only way to do all of that in time is knight c6. After white continue with his plan simultaneously, black plays knight takes c5, knight c4 and h4. Black again has to make a key move. Do black takes the d-pawn or the b-pawn? Knight takes d6 to stop white's pawn is an epic blunder, as white's pawn will push itself, and the king is forever stuck in the corner. If black knight tries to rescue the king, white just push his pawn forcing the knight to come back, and the knight is forever stuck there also. What's left in the board is black's two pawns versus a king, which cannot wins by its own without black's king help. Thus the final key move is played with knight takes b6 and the knight is going to stop white's past pawn just in time with a completely winning position. I hope you understand every moves, if you don't get anything just ask in comments. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.